roll call, Ms. Erickson. District 1, Tim Guthy. Present. District 2, Jason Venable. Present. District 3, Dennis Miller. Present. District 4, Stacey Levin. Present. Okay. Have our invocation by Mr. Porter and our pledge by Mr. Venable. For the meeting, we have six items on the agenda. Any changes before we proceed? We have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Okay, we have a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Okay. Uh, no one's signed up to speak this evening, so we'll move on to our discussion items. And the first is regarding the community garden for the juvenile court. You all have a letter of request in your packets, and uh, we have Mike Smith and Judge Porter with us tonight. If you'd like to Mike, kind of tell a little bit about what it is you'd like, like to do. Sure. Uh, thank you for letting me address you tonight. Uh, what we are asking to do is to use the lot adjacent to the juvenile court building to uh, start uh, basically a community service garden rather than a community garden. We want this garden for the, uh, to have for kids to work off community service hours and we want this to be so, so they can be made accountable uh, and hopefully that it will make a difference in their life for as uh, not getting any deeper into the juvenile court system. Uh, of course we would be screening the kids that uh, would work there and I don't see them possibly not even having to work together maybe an uh, hour at a time as they visit their probation officers. Uh, we want to keep too many from being there at one time and certainly I put in the proposal that we not have any more than three at one time. And that would be supervised by probation officers, also by uh, volunteers uh, in probation. And we've asked the uh, community uh, the master gardeners here in Jackson County to help us out with this and they've agreed that they'll uh, be happy to help us and we want to donate whatever vegetables are, are raised in it to, uh, to help feed the needy, uh, to those that need uh, thing, possibly using uh, the CASA agency as a vehicle for that. Uh, I think this would be great for Jackson County, I think it would be great for juvenile court. I think it's something that can start out small but that can really grow to be as big as uh, really as a uh, juvenile probation office can supply kids to work in it, which uh, that's usually not a problem. Uh, we do have a, a good many kids that uh, need to do such, and uh, I just think it would be good for the court system and for the county. Questions or comments on that? I have one question. It says in here that all uh, will be uh, required to have insurance or Medicaid. Yes. Is that, is that the family will... Uh, you'll assure that the, uh, the juvenile has insurance through the family? Absolutely, through uh, if they're Medicaid or through the family, yes sir. Uh, just in case any cuts, bruises, anything that may happen, we want to make sure they're covered. We don't want there to be any kind of liability issue there. And uh, certainly uh, if, you know, if something happens that they're covered, we can, they can get medical help uh, you know, as, soon as, as soon as they can. Uh, and we would have, uh, we also, I put in there that we're going to have a family member there on site when they were. Okay, thank you. Any questions or I think it would be a pretty positive thing for the, uh, the those young folks as far as one learning something and also giving them something to, to kind of get involved with. Um, and as far as the commission, really all we need to do is give them permission to use that site. Is everybody familiar with that little piece of uh, that plot that they're looking at it's right from kind of actually in front of the juvenile office, I guess, between the juvenile office and the parking lot there. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I guess we'll Thank get this arranged so we can get this taken care of. It says in here that you would want to start by spring of 2014. If we if we go ahead and do something with this, would you think that this fall would be uh, something or do you still plan for next spring? You know, if you approve the use, I'd like to see it speed it up. Okay. Just to be honest with you. Okay. Thank you. I'll see what we need to do and get that on our agenda so that we can make whatever approvals are necessary for that. Okay. Uh, next item is Environmental Services Association, Mr. Dale's story.
just as a background uh, to this discussion, uh, the Alabama Solid Waste and Recyclable Materials Management Act, uh, the Code of Alabama, uh, requires cities and counties of the state to develop and adopt comprehensive solid waste management plans, which forecast and describe the management of the solid waste generated within that local government over a 10 year period. Uh, the solid waste plans are required uh, before a county or municipality can grant local approval on matters related to solid waste management within their jurisdiction. That includes disposal, recycling, uh, collection, uh, transport, just about anything of the solid waste management. <coughs> it is also required in order to be eligible for the uh, state's recycling grant program. Updated in 2004, uh, ESA had the privilege at that time of uh, developing uh, the update for Jackson County. Uh, we would very much like to uh, again serve in that capacity with you all. Uh, during the last update cycle in 2004, uh, ESA developed uh, 20 county plans, uh, and none of them were rejected or even returned for corrections by agencies. Uh, their plans are due to be renewed again uh, by September of next year, 2014. Now, uh, we have submitted a letter uh, to Mr. Widener uh, outlining what our plan will contain. Process that will be required to develop the plan and a budget cost for that. <coughs> uh, we encourage all of our potential clients to, uh, of course, we know that this is well into the, the uh, fiscal year for, for the, uh, our potential clients, and, uh, but we would like to get this number in your hands so that you might budget for the next fiscal year. Uh, we propose that we would get started uh, in the fall, around October sometime. Uh, at that, we anticipate that the plan will take six to seven months to develop. Uh, we would encourage you to do this as early as possible because uh, there are over 60 plans that are going to be submitted to ADM uh, about the summer of next year, uh, at least starting then, and the later that your plan is submitted, the longer it's going to take for them to review. And final approval by ADM is, is of course, required. I'd like to uh, open up the floor to any questions. Uh, I can discuss that. We are proposing to uh, furnish your update this year for 14500 uh, That, of course, is uh, with the anticipation that we will get, get started by the end of this year at the latest. Questions or comments? Can I have some? Yes. Um, appreciate first of all, appreciate you coming up with your story. Uh, this uh, this fourteen thousand five hundred dollar uh, submittal includes all the municipalities in the county with the exception of Scottsburg because uh, the previous time Scottsburg opted out. Chairman, uh, have you heard from the mayor? I haven't heard back from them. I'll uh, follow up this week and see if they've come up with anything. I also spoke with, uh, with uh, the lady in John's office, and they yes. said if uh, Scottsboro did decide to opt in, that would be a uh, matter of Scottsboro or any municipality. Uh, the way the uh, plans work now, and this was not as they were in the original 1990 cycle, uh, but the way they are now, uh, any county or any city that is under the umbrella of the county still has total autonomy when it comes to their solid waste management. In other words, Scottsboro, if they had wanted to do something like open a recycling center within Scottsboro, they could handle everything about that in terms of uh, host government approval. And the county, uh, you may not like this, but this is in the law, the county would have uh, essentially no say in that. Uh, whereas in 1990, the municipality would approve it and they would have to go to the county. Uh, but this was amended in the uh, update to the law in 2002. Uh, so that uh, 
in essence, there really is no <coughs> reason for Scottsboro, for a practical matter, to not be part of the plan. Uh, but that's their call. And uh, as I said, as Mr. Widener indicated, uh, our 14.5 does not include Scottsboro, and I should mention that. There's also, a, is there a series of public hearings required that y'all conduct, or one public hearing uh, that y'all have to conduct here in the county? That's correct. When the county, uh, when the plan is essentially ready, uh, it's of course submitted to the county for review. Uh, and then upon the uh, commission's uh, uh, approval, uh, a 30-day public comment period is then initiated. At the end of that 30-day period, there needs to be one public hearing. Uh, at the end of the public hearing, all comments, questions, whatever, are then incorporated into the plan. It maybe doesn't change the plan, they're at least responding to. Uh, and then that whole package is then submitted to ADM. The county commission can then uh, approve, a res uh, uh, approve a resolution approving the plan, which it, uh, then adopts and uh, that would be the end of the process. Is, is that included in the six to seven month time period? Yes, sir. Uh, start start to finish. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, so we just need to determine, uh, come up with, I guess, a time to do this, or if we're going to do this, what we have to do, right? Uh, we have we in the past pushed some of these costs over to municipalities? Last time we did pro uh, to the municipality. seamless process. Um, it, just, it worked like it was supposed to when we had the public hearing. Not real public input, as I remember. Uh, no, no comments. Uh, sort of thing that worked well. And it's, it's required to be done. We have to have a plan. Um, whether ESA does or somebody else does. It, it to I'd like to take a look, if, if there's no objection, let's take a look at the funding options and maybe put this on the last meeting of this month. Next item is uh, a resolution regarding attendance for county board members. Um, this was something that was mentioned while we were in practical last week uh, as one of the other commissioners or party groups that presented this. But, Mr. Guthrie, did you have some information on this? Uh, yeah, well, what I'd like to say is uh, we've had some uh, inquiries about uh, board members, all the boards that we appoint, uh, setting a uh, mandatory or you can't miss no more than two meetings. Uh, if a board member misses more than two meetings, it's going to be up to the commission. Consecutive meetings? Yeah, consecutive. Two consecutive meetings, it'll be uh, up to the commission uh, to remove that, that individual from the board. I'd like to have it put on next week for a little bit. Any questions or comments on that? Who, who's going to be responsible for? Telling this information. So I think it should be, you know, each, the head of each board, maybe just turn that in on a. We probably need to look at doing a little better job of knowing when our board appointments are up. We um, may, maybe a, just a little small report from some of these boards about mm -hmm. what's going and who's attending these. You think that would be possible? We're working on right now to get a better idea of those board appointments. As far as reports from the boards, we could look at that. Maybe if they send us a quarterly report, just sure. on anything or something like that, we could ask probably for that. That's what I think a quarterly report is the best. I think we agree. From each, each head of each committee. Maybe each month, maybe they can send the commission office uh, one of the people that were there. Yeah. We've got a lot of uh, boards in the county committees and everything else, so we do really need to take a look at all of them. Uh, the appointment process is one thing. As far as what you're looking at here, what, you know, if they said that one county had this, what kind of authority can we, can this be done across the board on all boards, or is it something yeah, that's limited to what we can do? You know, Mr. Porter? Uh, normally, I can't speak 
to a particular board, but normally the, uh, the statute authorizing the boards provides for the appointment of the members of the board. But normally there's nothing in the statute that provides for the excusal of a member of the board. And I, yeah, I think each one of them could resign, and I'd have to look at this to see how it could comply with law to make sure that we don't impose a standard upon a board that the law doesn't allow. But uh, it can be done, we just have to be careful how we do it. If we could, uh, if you would be opposed, Mr. Guffey, maybe get that information together and then and then at the next work session, Brent, we'll have this at the next work session. If it's something we can do, we can form a resolution around that. Would that be suitable? And it will probably only pertain to the board that is solely appointed by the county commission. Right. Some board yeah. is not solely appointed. Right. Any other questions or comments or recommendations on <coughs> All right. And our next item back to school sales tax holiday. Ms. Erickson. This is an annual resolution that uh, just authorizes that uh, school tax holiday. It's usually the first school weekend in August. Um, we have adjusted this resolution if, it's, if it is acceptable with the commission to make this um, continuing and so that we don't have to do this each year. It would just continue unless you decided to um, pull out of it. So it doesn't have to come before you each year. Is there an issue with that, you know, Mr. Porter, who would set us up? Okay. Actually, I thought we'd done it before, but possibly not. Yeah. yeah. Any questions or comments from the commission? And <coughs> sales tax goes with how that's set up, we, we can still apply this, correct? The sales tax holiday, I guess, has been done in the past over time, right? Yes. So, right. Questions or comments? <coughs> if there's no objection, then we'll place this on the agenda for next Monday night. Next item is the inmate telecommunication agreement. Uh, I gave that to you at the end of last week's meeting for review. Um, questions or comments on this? Paragraph number one, there we go. Uh, different that location. That's not the correct name. <coughs> is it? Mr. Hodges pointed out they may have a bigger place that we've got. We can take all the rest. Other questions or comments on it? I think this is the one the sheriff is uh, recommending we move forward with. <coughs> Have we had a response from the other group yet? I received an email back stating that we've been stuck proposal. Is this the one from Sheriff Barber? Yes. And tell me again, real quick. The recoup fee, is this based on revenue generated? This is not out of pocket, what kind of cost of the county, correct? We, we would not pay, from what I understand, we don't pay any funds out at all. And then as the equipment, if we get a percentage of that revenue, we get a percentage through, through the time period until that equipment is paid for. And at that time, about that time is when the contract will end, and then we can renegotiate because the equipment's paid for. We can renegotiate our the, the county's part of what we can we can negotiate out that that amount. Schedule B, the investment recoupment. That's just if we terminate, correct? Correct. Right. We turn back before the contract's over, and then we would have to go and be prorated with that. Would that be this with how it is just that it says first and second anniversary, is, uh, Mr. Porter? Would that mean even beyond that, that first agreement, we would have to pay this fee if we go into the fourth and fifth year? The fourth and fifth year would be uh, under the anniversary. Um, we would pay 60% of the total. Right. So up to the sixth, at the sixth year is when we would not have any fees. So it, where this contract is less than that time frame, um, we would uh, 
need to go six years to not see it three years. Uh, we need to go six years in order to not have to pay a recruitment fee. Mm -hmm. Right. That the way. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to sign a contract, uh, that would probably behoove us to do that for a six year deal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Four. I'd like to talk to him, Mr. Bartlett, and see Chair Bartlett, and kind of ask him about that. That's more important. About that recruitment fee, as far as the three years. And if, see if we, we can negotiate a year for slide or something. Right. If we're going to go a little bit longer and see if we can do something. My understanding is, is that is they take the number, the, it's the total amount of equipment and divide it by months. So it's an interesting thing until they actually come down and do a, the cost. a cost. And then once they do, they divide that by however many months. And so, because you may have a, a, a real good month this month, and it may go down a little bit, so each month ain't gonna be the same. So that means it could pay off in four and a half years, it could pay six and a half years. But if we can negotiate a percentage drop, and what's on the schedule, it'd just be better for us <coughs> if he were going to claim it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Do you have anything else, Mr. Porter? You want to um, there are a couple. Of, uh, it provides for 15% gross revenue to the county until the equipment's paid for, and then 50% after that, which is probably pretty good. Um, I, paragraph 12 bothers me. It's pretty onerous on the County as far as indemnity to tell me, I'd like to be able to negotiate that paragraph. Mr. Porter, I didn't ask about that. And he did say that, uh, because I, I brought it up, he did say that that was negotiable. Good. 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 Much, much happier with it if that was not in there. Anything else? Any other questions or comments on the committee? What we can do is try to set up a time later this week to get on the phone with uh, Mr. Bartlett, Chair Bartlett, and uh, go over these items we've talked about and get a, a different contractor with those changes and get that contract to us. We can either put this on the agenda for next Monday night um, with those changes and vote on it, or we can give us our one more work session uh, to make sure all these changes necessary to make forward in this preference of the commission. I mean, I think if, if you're talking to me and we're used to that, I mean, I'll have fun with both of us. Anybody else? Okay. If we can, we'll try to get these changes made and get a copy back out to you by the end of this week so that you have time to review it. And we'll, again, if we need more time, we can table it Monday night, but otherwise we'll have this. And we should have that other agreement also by the end of the week, so we'll take a look at that and be able to choose between the two. Comments or questions? All right. Next item is a local gas tax resolution. Uh, you all have in your packets a resolution that would request um, the ability to use the local three cent gas tax the same as the, the state seven cent gas tax. Uh, it would open up the use of court. Right now it's very limited in our use. We have a high demand for equipment in public works, but we can only purchase equipment out of so many dollars. This would allow us to to do that where needed. My goal would be to budget this the same as we budget our 111 and at the end of the year any monies that we have left over we would have that free to use for equipment. Uh, I think it would be a much better budgeting situation for public works. I've talked with the uh, uh, engineer, assistant engineer and uh, discussed this and I think you guys are From an accounting standpoint, I think it would be easier because we would have that be one less fun to have to worry about in public works. Yeah, it would still be separate funds. Yes. On the Just the usage. Right. Questions or comments on this? Okay. If there's no, what we'll need to do is pass a resolution in support of this, and then take the. Uh, got an attached draft of the bill, take that to the uh, legislature and ask that they put that on. Hopefully we can get that 
in and advertise this year. Uh, that's what I push for. If we can get this passed next Monday night, I'd like to get that to and hopefully get that uh, done this year during the session. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No opposition will place this on the agenda for next Monday night as well. Alright, uh, move on to our report from Saracen. I just wanted to make a note the uh, minutes from the March 25th meeting are in this packet and I've also <coughs> emailed to each of you and just uh, review them and let me know if there's any changes. Please. Thank you. Mr. Wagner? Uh, yes, sir. Give us one of these which I'll pass it around. We haven't uh, talked about ATRIP in a while. I was talking to Mr. Hodges earlier today. It felt like I might want to go ahead and bring it back up just a little bit. Mr. Hodges, but uh, we have talked about ATRIP. 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 Right now, we've got down County Road 33 from Highway 72 to County Road 111. And as y'all uh, recall, this is contingent on uh, DOT reclassifying it as a major flag. We've got all that paperwork submitted to them and asking them for the rush and they're trying to get it reclassified. So that one's, that one's still kind of up in the air as far as even being eligible. Uh, then we've, uh, County Road 43 is uh, from high that section, from Highway 35 over the DeKalb County line. And then uh, County Road 5 is one that Commissioner Levin and myself have, uh, uh, Madison County have contacted us. They're looking at doing their portion of that road through that trail. This is a road that goes off of uh, 72 and goes into uh, Nevo. They're looking at doing their part of it, so our, our part's not too long, it's about 2.2 miles. And we have to have the application in uh, by the last day of, of May. Which, uh, there's uh, two or three roads on this last that we didn't get approved on. How many roads did we not get approved on around two? Uh, yes, one of those was 33, we had to get. Okay, and then we have one or two other ones. Uh, uh, yes, nice. and the other one, uh, actually, it was two portions of 33. This is just to start more if y'all have any more we can I just want to give y'all time to add to it and give us time because we have to have a broad amount. Give us time to go out and look at them and, and give an estimate up so we can do some uh, So uh, y'all be talking about it and just let me know uh, if you got anything. What is the time that the holiday would be? Uh, which one? On the 8th. On the 8th. Going up. Was it 8 or 17? 17 is one. When was it that we started? We've already uh, we've done everything we can do because of the season right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the patching done. Uh, they've been working, been working on the guardrail. I'm not sure if uh, they've got the guardrail lined up. But we have to wait April 15th uh, to put down the first layer, which is the E-treatment, uh, which is a seal coat. And you can't do that before April 15th and with good weather. And that's just a DOP spec. You know,